Hi and welcome to CERN, based here in Geneva, Switzerland. What is CERN? Well, CERN basically is the European Council for Nuclear Research and it is the largest physics research facility in the world. But why does it exist? What is its origins? And why is CERN important in terms of our understanding of science? In this video, I'm going to discuss those things and as well why CERN is important in terms of scientific research. So stay tuned. So what is CERN? Now, before I introduce CERN, I want to lay the groundwork. At the end of the 19th century, saw an experiment that had a monumental impact on the way we view matter. With the discovery of the electron by J.J. Thomson in 1897, our understanding of the atom changed from this indivisible sphere to something that it was made of smaller components. And as a result, J.J. Thomson developed a model of the atom that was a bit like a cake with raisins embedded, or often referred to as the plum pudding model, with the positive dome with electrons embedded in it. So when Ernest Rutherford devised an experiment to test this model, he did two things that had its culmination in the beginning of CERN. He started the concept of determining properties of something by firing particles at it. In his case, he fired alpha particles at gold atoms and he observed deflections coming off the gold atoms. Now, as a result, he determined that the majority of the atom's mass resided in the nucleus. And so he started the notion of using particle accelerators to examine the structure of the atom's nucleus. So over the next few decades, we saw the advent of particle physics, that is the study of the structure of the nucleus, but using particle accelerators to examine it. Now, the faster you can accelerate your particles, the more energy the particles have, and therefore the better they can probe the nucleus. And so in the 1930s, saw the development of the cyclotron type accelerator, followed by the synchrotron type accelerator in 1945. Now, I intend to produce some videos on how they work for those who are interested in physics behind, uh, behind them, so yes, yeah, stay tuned. Now, this is where CERN comes in. After World War II, with much of Europe, of course, in ruins, there was an increasing concern for the lack of scientific research in Europe and the potential brain drain as many physicists left Europe and went to other countries. So it was Louis de Broglie who suggested an establishment of a European Centre for Nuclear Research. And in 1953, under the auspices of UNESCO, a meeting was held in Paris where 11 nations signed into existence the Conseil European pour la Recherche Nucléaire, or CERN for short, and CERN was born. And what is its aim? Well, the humble question, what is the universe made up of? Its charter was to build state-of-the-art particle accelerators to better understand the nature of matter and the structure of the universe, to perform world-class research in particle physics, and to provide a place where scientists from all over Europe can collaborate. Critically, its charter also mandates that it remain unpolitical, that its work would be for peaceful purposes only, and that all its results would be made available to the public, that is, complete transparency. So Geneva was chosen because of its central location, and Geneva already had a very well-established reputation as an international city. So in 1954, in the fields around the village called Menier, just outside the outskirts of Geneva, work was started. Now over the decades, CERN has grown, building a succession of particle accelerators to probe the structure of the nucleus, each one being more energetic than the previous, and in the process provided an increasing understanding of the fundamental nature of matter. So first was the synchrocyclotron in 1957. And we are here at the first particle accelerator at CERN, the synchrocyclotron. Pretty exciting. Then came the proto-synchrotron in 1959, the super-proton synchrotron in 1976, and the electron-positron collider, and of course the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, which was instrumental in providing evidence for the Higgs boson and validated what we call the standard model, which explains the fundamental components of matter. Now CERN encompasses a huge area, predominantly involving two main sites, the Mirian site and the Premises site, and of course the LHC and the four main detectors on that ring. And signifying its international focus, it straddles across the Swiss and French border. And on these sites, apart from the laboratories and offices, you'll find particle accelerators performing a whole range of experiments to look at different aspects of our understanding of matter. 
Now CERN is much more than a European organization these days. What started with 12 member states from Europe has grown to 23 member states, seven associate member states, which includes India and Pakistan, with many more countries of observer status and cooperation agreements with CERN. There are over 600 institutes and universities that use CERN's facilities. One local example for me is, for example, the University of Sydney's Particle Physics Group, who works with CERN's Atlas Detector analyzing the data that's collected there. CERN is truly an international organization. Of the over 17,000 people who call CERN their workplace, over 12,000 are not only physicists, but engineers, mathematicians, computer scientists, and many more. Plus, of course, the many support personnel that are there, representing over 110 nationalities. Although CERN's focus is gaining a better understanding of nature, out of CERN has come many applications that you and I have been impacted on. The World Wide Web was created there, and so was the capacitive touch of the electronic screens that your devices now utilize. So you can thank CERN for the fact that you're watching this on your device. PET scans and other medical technologies to diagnose and treat cancer is a direct application of the technology that comes from CERN. And because CERN has to build many new instruments from scratch, purpose-built for its work, the technologies that they produce end up being used in other diverse range of industries, such as aeronautics, manufacturing, computing, and medicine, just to name a few. So what started as a place to do cutting edge research in Europe has become a global cooperation that not only has advanced our understanding of matter, but has directly and indirectly positively impacted every person on this planet in some way or another. So I hope that's helped you understand a little bit about why CERN is important in today's economy and society. In other videos, I'll be discussing more the physics that occurs here at CERN, the LHC, the various detectors, and also the physics concepts that come out of CERN. So stay tuned for those videos as well. I'm Paul from Geneva. Take care. Bye for now.